Alright, we're trying out a new location because the bathroom has really good lighting and I hope that that translates on camera. Williams is also here to join the party. He's like, what are you doing? Like, what? Uh, honestly, what are you doing? But hey y'all, I'm back and I have more creepy stories that I'm so nervous to read. These are let's not meet stories, but they're not yours. Sorry. I think this said it had like a hundred stories in it or like a hundred percent true stories. That's not a hundred stories. I don't know how many stories are in here, but we're going to read them. We're just going to see what happens. Number one says stranger under the bed. I read this one. You guys. Oh my God. I'm 22 and this incident happened a year and a half ago. I had just moved into my first apartment. It was in the process of moving in. The door that led into my apartment locks itself automatically when closed. So I was going to the entrance of my apartment complex to get my mail while talking on the phone with my boyfriend. I returned to my apartment and sat on the bed while opening the mail while using the phone. I dropped the phone on the floor and it landed under the bed, so I had to lie on the floor and stretch for it. I saw something that caught my eye. There was someone under my bed. My eyes widened and I choked the urge to scream. The person under my bed was lying still with his back towards me and his head to his chest, so I couldn't see his face. And he didn't see me. Trying to be rational while so many thoughts rushed through my head, I picked up the phone and said, Sorry, drop my phone. I'm just gonna take a shower and call you back. And that's all it says. And that's and that's all. Oh wait, never mind. It says read the rest here. Okay, we're going to it. Sorry. The bathroom is right by my bed, so I hastily walked in, quietly locked the door, turned the shower on, jumped out of my window. My apartment's on the first floor, and called the police. They told me to wait nearby, but to go across the street and see if anyone comes out the door to the apartment complex. This was during summer, and it was still light out. I placed myself across the street, hiding behind a car while watching my open bathroom window and the entry door. I called my boyfriend and he came to me just before the police. I gave them my keys and they went inside. Only moments later, two cops came out holding a thin and tired looking man. His eyes looked crazy, but he didn't try to get away. The policeman that had stood beside me and comforted me while the police searched through my house, I was a mess, shivering and crying, I think anybody would be told me that the man stood outside my bathroom door with one of my kitchen knives waiting for me to come out. This man had somehow crept in my entry door while I was getting my mail and hid under my bed. The man that was trying to hurt me turned out to be a homeless person and was placed in a mental hospital. My boyfriend moved in with me the very next day. Love him. No, because we're off to such an insane start. I don't know what else is in here and I'm not ready. Number two says I had to pretend she was my daughter. I'm currently a uni student and on Tuesday nights I come home pretty late. Not late enough that my parents would call the police, but just missing the regular bus times. Anyway, as luck would have it, I managed to catch the very last bus one Tuesday night after getting to the station, and typically it's nothing to be worried about. If you keep to yourself and stick to safe looking people, other uni students, mothers, the bus driver, you'll be alright. Growing up in a dangerous country and migrating to a much safer one hasn't rid me of those instincts, and that night I got all bad vibes and buzzy. Something was off about that evening, and I didn't know what. We get to the main bus stop, the shopping center, and I find that the bus has terminated its route. It's done for the night. Thanks, asshole bus driver. Well, fuck. It's dark, it's late, I can't drive, my parents can't pick me up, they're at yoga, and I'm too broke to afford a taxi, so I decide to walk home. The exercise will be good for me. Now, from the shopping center, it would take me a good 20 to 30 minutes to reach my house if I power walked. I could probably run home, but fuck that. When you leave the shops, if you follow the road, there's a local Catholic school, a public library, a public school, and a few bus stops along the way. What is happening to my voice? Near the library is a traffic intersection, the most brightly lit area of this entire road, but it's also a very small square. It's a joke, honestly. As I'm walking, it takes me less than a second to realize how fucking dark it was on the street. It was a bit creepy walking by the local Catholic school with their massive fucking crucifix in the middle of a huge massive land. In front of me is the girl who looks about my age. Asian, and she's walking fairly quickly. Understandable. From the corner of my eye across the road, I see a man kind of half jogging, half walking, and I'm not sure what he's up to, but it was just weird. I kept an eye on him and the girl. At the intersection, my friend is there and he greets me enthusiastically, a hug and a kiss on the cheek. He momentarily distracts me from the weird running dude and the girl. Between my friend and I greeting each other, I completely miss when the guy crossed the street and is in my path. My friend turns out to be a douchebag friend and just leaves even after I've told him about the weird dude. I'm not far from the creep and the girl now, but he's talking to her. And if a guy has any common sense, he will not speak to a girl or woman while she's alone at night because we've all heard the horror stories. By this stage, I've quickened my pace into a sprint, holding onto my backpack so my laptop inside won't make so much noise, and I'm assessing my very limited options on how to save this poor woman. I'm a very small, very unintimidating Asian girl, and the guy looked taller the closer I got. 
I felt very tiny and incredibly stupid for doing this because I was still kind of far, but I have crazy good eyesight and the streetlights were hitting his face so I could make it out accurately enough in case I needed to identify him. He was a white male, early 30s to 40s, brown hair, wearing glasses, striped long sleeve top, and brown khakis. His eyes were really big though, kind of like that face you make when someone surprises you with something particularly scandalous. And I come up with what was probably the most stupidly brilliant plan I've ever concocted. I kind of stand there, hoodie on, feet apart, hands on my hips, in my best, loudest impersonation of an older Filipino woman getting mad at her child with the strongest accent I could. Honestly, if I were a bit taller, I may have gotten away with this. What are you doing, huh? You were supposed to be home already and talking to a boy and he's white. That's so funny. Excuse me, look at me while I'm talking to you. I did not raise you like this. I don't remember exactly word for word what I said, but I'm basically copying whatever my mom says when she's angry with me. The entire time I'm yelling, I can see the guy trying to inch away and the girl looks so bewildered, like a deer caught in headlights. At this stage, honestly, I'm expecting her to run away. I turn to the guy. And where do you think you're going, huh? He fucking ran for it, like I swear. It was like watching a cartoon. The girl was standing there, I take off my hood and I wave to her. I was still far away and asked if she was alright in my regular, not very Filipino accent. She was just staring at me. I apologized if I scared her, but I had to give him away because my younger sister would tell me about a creepy guy that corners young girls in the park not far away from where we live. Anyways, we hugged and exchanged names and numbers and now we're basically friends forever. Turns out she doesn't live very far and didn't even realize what was happening until she couldn't get away from the creep. I ended up walking her home from there. Her older brother dropped me off. We called the police while we walked to her place. When we retold the stories to our families, at this stage, I very correctly assumed they were Filipino as well, so communication was easy. They banned us completely from taking the bus past seven. I was reluctant in telling my friends this because I knew they'd laugh, but it was such a serious thing. What if I wasn't there? As comical as that sounded, she was really shook up, but very relieved and grateful. She kept hugging me and stuff, which is weird. I don't usually hug strangers. Police later stopped a nondescript station wagon about 20 minutes down the main road. In it was a man matching my description. They searched his car, found a few photos of girls in the glove compartment, and even more on his phone. They were all Asian, specifically Filipino. Months later I found out about this. My mom tells me they actually found photos of my sister and I. It made me shudder. If that creep ever came near my little sister, I would fuck him up. It's also very important to note the only reason why we got such detailed and updated information was being the daughter of a surgeon and a lawyer, my parents have connections, and they use them accordingly. If it were different, we would have gotten soothingly vague at best. No, so true. Like, it's so hard to, like, do anything or get any information. They don't care. I am so grateful for you. It wasn't even me in that situation, but, like, I would hope that if I was that girl, that somebody would do the same thing for me, and I would do the same thing for anyone. I would probably maybe not think of that so quickly, but I would do something. I would try. I don't know. Number three says Dr. Ramsey, which is freaking me out because doctor, like, ah. A week or so before my 10th birthday, I walked to the corner store with a $5 bill and picked up a jar of ragu for my mom. On my way home, a man I'd never seen before fell in step with me and began talking. Hi, he said cheerfully. My name is Dr. Ramsey. I'm a pediatrician. Do you know what a pediatrician is? I already fucking hate this. I walked along silently, not replying, and hoping he would take that as a sign he should leave me alone. Subletties were not his strong suit though because he kept right on chattering. Are your parents looking for a pediatrician for you? Of course, you're almost a big girl now. You'll need another kind of doctor soon, won't you? That's okay though, they can still bring you to me until then. What's your name? You have beautiful hair. I was just on my way to get some suckers for the candy jar in my office. Do you like suckers? Thankfully, we were nearing my house, so I ran forward, up the back steps, and in through the kitchen door. I didn't know it then, but that was the beginning of a very long, very scary ordeal. It didn't take long after that for Dr. Ramsey to begin showing up. At first, it seemed benign enough, at least to a kid. He would drive by nearly every day, smiling and waving. I told my mom, who said maybe it was him on his way home from work, but then the phone calls began. My dad called me into the living room and sat me down. He asked about the day Dr. Ramsey followed me home and if I talked to him. He said I wasn't in trouble, but I needed to tell him the truth. I told him no. He asked if I was sure. Could I be forgetting something? I told him no again, and he frowned, and then asked, then how does he know your name? I didn't know. It turns out that's not all he knew. He knew my sister's name as well. Pretty soon, neither my sister or I were allowed to answer the phone. He called several times a day at first. Neither of us knew what he was saying. Then one night, one of my brothers told us that he was telling my parents that he was going to hurt me, and later, my sister. Things got complicated after that. My dad had called the police, but as this was before there were any stalking laws, there was not a lot they could do. There's still nothing they can fucking do. They told my parents to call back if he tried anything. No, that's like, that's insane. It's still like that. My dad then called a friend of his from back in the day who happened to be a cop. For the next month, my dad's friend escorted me to and from school. 
Suddenly life as I knew it came screeching to a halt. I couldn't walk to school alone, I couldn't play outside, I couldn't walk to Super America, sort of like a 7-Eleven for those who don't know. When access to me was completely denied, things escalated. It was around this time he began threatening my sister as well. Then one afternoon, my sister, two of my brothers, my mom and I were in the kitchen. One of my brothers saw a glimpse of someone in the garage. They had seen him too. Dr. Ramsey came bolting out of the garage, my brothers chasing after him. They ran all the way to Cherokee Park where he lost them in the trees. My parents called the police again, but nothing came of it. The only information they had was a description and a name that was almost certainly fake. A couple weeks later, we woke to find our dog. Oh my God. A couple weeks later, we woke to find our dog hanging from the side porch. She was a gorgeous saddleback German Shepherd born the same day I was. We were all devastated. The cops said there was no evidence it was him and ruled it accidental and none of us believed that. No, that's, I'm sorry, I'm like pissed and so upset for you. His phone calls became more informative. In the meantime, he would talk about who was home and who wasn't. If my brother would say my dad was home, he would tell him who was really in the house. He would also talk about the house itself, about the window in the kitchen he could easily open with a knife from the outside, even when it was locked, and about the French doors that connected the living room to the side porch and how the lock could be finagled, finangled, I don't know how to say that word, from the outside if you jiggled it just right. That night, my dad put in some carpenter nails at the bottom of the French doors until he could get a new lock ordered. My parents had to go to a company event for my dad's work. My older brothers were at Saints West roller skating rink. My sister was on the phone with her best friend. My little brother was on the floor asleep. I was watching Devo on the midnight special with Wolfman Jack. It was late. Suddenly, the top of the French doors swung inward, and in the few milliseconds before the nails in the bottom caused them to snap back, I could see his silhouette. My sister whipped the phone at the television, and we ran up the stairs. About halfway up, we realized our little brother was still asleep on the living room floor. As quietly as we could, we slipped back down the stairs to get him. We all went into the bedroom and didn't turn on the light, that way he couldn't see it from outside. We watched out the window for a while, and when we didn't find him, we crept down the hall to our brother's room to look. We looked down and could see him standing at the back door. He knocked, loudly. What do you want? My sister asked out the window. He stepped back and said, is this the Mercy residence? I have a pizza for delivery. Can you come to the door? She scoffed at him, declaring she was not stupid. She could see he didn't have a pizza and she was calling the cops. He left. A short while later, my brothers returned home. We told them what happened and they walked around the yard watching for him. They came back in and things settled down. By now we had pretty much given up calling the cops because it never helped. So we just went back in, each of us, except my youngest brother still asleep, carrying a knife from the kitchen, just in case. Eventually one of my brothers went into the kitchen to get a bowl of cereal as a snack. You know that sensation you get when you can just feel someone watching you? Yeah, he had that in spades. He kept looking around the kitchen, through the doorway, into the dining room, at the windows. He didn't see anything, but he could feel eyes on him. So we went closer to the door to try to see better. The kitchen lights were reflecting on the windows of the door. It had three rows of three windows, and he still couldn't see. He stepped closer, then closer again, until he was right up to the door, then cupped his hands on either side of his head so he could see. There on the other side of the window pane was Dr. Ramsey smiling back at him. He turned to yell for my older brothers. When he looked back again, he was gone, then went out again to look for him, but they didn't see him. The next night we were at the table playing Crazy Eights. And my brother was restless. My sister asked him what's wrong and he said he always felt like any minute there would be a boom, boom, boom on a door or a window. Almost immediately after he finished that sentence, boom, boom, boom on the window right behind him. In the chaos, the two eldest ran out, but he was already gone. A couple of weeks later, I was at school and we were outside on the playground during recess. I was swinging upside down when I saw that now familiar blue Ford Galaxy cruising by, moving slowly. There he was, smiling and waving. He called my name, I ran to the teacher and told her. The school had been told about him and she took me inside right away and called my mom. That same day, my mom had gotten a call from the school office asking her to verify that my dad was picking me up as he'd called to say he was on his way. He wasn't. Not long after that, I woke up one night thirsty. I went down to the kitchen for a drink and there, sitting alone in the dark, was my dad. On the table, a gun. He was tired of the police waiting until Dr. Ramsey tried something. He was tired of his children being terrorized. He was tired of being afraid every time he left for work that something would happen to us while he was gone. I sat with him for a time, watching before he sent me to bed. These events and many more took place over a period of 18 months. Then as suddenly as it began, it was over. He had vanished from our lives. The phone calls, the drive-by with the creepy waves, everything. For a long time during and after the Dr. Ramsey days, I would have reoccurring nightmares in which I would wake up to find him standing over me as I slept. It took a long time before I felt like a kid again. I found out years later that when he was calling, Dr. Ramsey would tell my parents he was going to 
R-word and kill me and later my sister and that there was nothing they could do about it. I don't know what happened to him when he disappeared. I don't know if he was in a car wreck, locked in prison, in a coma. But sometimes I wonder if the wait ended for my dad when he was sitting in the dark kitchen one night. I don't know. And I'm not sure I want to. I genuinely think that's one of the most uncomfortable things I've ever read. That is absolutely terrifying. And like, how the fuck did, like, I'm just like, why? Like, uh, why are, why can we not do anything about stuff like, like, he was showing up to their house. How is that not doing something? How is that not trying anything? How is the threat not enough? The multiple threats, it's not like it happened one time. And even if it did, it should still matter. But it's like the constant phone calls for 18 months. How is that not trying something? No, this shit is fucked up. I think I'm gonna try to find two shorter ones. This one says my mom used to clean houses and she quit after this. In the mid eighties, my mom was a cleaner in Australia. She would do houses in suburban areas and would sometimes do houses in rural slash wine regions. We lived near both. She would leave business cards at the local shops and got most of her business this way and some through referrals and word of mouth. One day she got a call from a lady who sounded like she was around 60 asking my mom to clean her old farmhouse. She made a lot of odd demands and mom would usually meet clients before taking on new business. In this case, the lady did not want to meet her and said she would leave the keys under the front doormat. Mom agreed mainly because the lady was quite obviously wealthy and was offering to pay substantially more than she would reasonably expect. She went to the house on a Monday morning and she already felt unnerved by the long driveway. The house was essentially in the middle of a very large and very empty property. She found the keys and started cleaning. About an hour into the clean, she hears the back door shut. Mom was told nobody would be at the house, so she immediately felt unsafe. She stood frozen in the kitchen for what she said felt like three to four minutes, although she said it could have been much longer. There were no other cars on the property. She wanted to leave immediately, but had two rooms left to do, both were bedrooms. She said as time passed and she heard nothing else, she decided that perhaps it was nothing or perhaps something had fallen and it wasn't the door. She walked up the hallway and stepped into the bedroom. All over the bed were black and white photos. As she got closer, she realized the photos were all of her. Some were taken at her family home and many others were taken at other houses mom would clean, some through windows or over fences. She used the house phone to call the police and immediately drove to the end of the driveway. The lady ended up being investigated but continued to claim that it was a break-in. After some time, the police stopped with their searching and we ended up moving to a new town four months later, like again, doing nothing. That's Every time mom tells me this story, I get serious chills. Absolutely a true story too. To this day, my mom thinks the lady had something to do with it, but why and for what purpose? No, like, like, what the fuck? I know I always say I'm trying not to swear, but like how am I like meant to not swear when like this stuff is happening and it's like pissing me off? Okay, and finally, I thought this was only an urban legend. Thank God I didn't stop my car. This happened a couple months ago. It feels hollow to put a catchy title on what happened to me because it freaked me the fuck out for a while, but I think it fits in this community. I was driving home from work at 2 a.m. I'm a nurse and I live in a small city. The roads were totally deserted and it was freezing. I don't live far from work, maybe a couple of miles. I'm driving down a residential street around the corner from my house and I see a man lying face down in the street. Now remember, I'm a nurse. My first thought was, great, I gotta help this guy. I was coming off a long shift and falls happen all the time. Liam's just like rubbing his face against my monitor, which is right behind you because my bathroom is my office right now because I don't have a desk. So I'm sorry, it's really loud. I'm trying to get him to stop, but he won't. And he just started music. Okay. As I slowed down the car, I suddenly realized what an idiot move that was. I'm a hundred pound woman and I don't carry any weapons. I thought I should do something to help the guy. So I called 911 as I drove past him and slowed to a stop at the end of the block. While I was stopped at the light, I explained to the dispatcher that there was a man in the road who might need assistance. All of a sudden, I hear a loud bang, bang from the driver's side window. I scream and look over. A man was pounding on my window and jiggling the handle of my locked car. I look in the rearview mirror and saw that there was no man laying in the street. Still on the phone with 911, I screamed, I'm so scared to the dispatcher and floored it through the red light. I would do the same. I quickly told him what had happened and even though I was right by my house, he told me to keep driving. Thank God. After a few minutes, I had calmed down and he told me to loop back around. I pulled over down the road from my house and stayed in the car. I didn't see the man anywhere, so I got off the phone with the dispatcher who told me he was sending a police car to cruise the area. As I gather up my things, I do a final scan of the area and I see the man. He's walking with two other men. I hunched way down in my car until they were far down the road then bolted into my house. I don't know if he had ill intent, but it freaks me the hell out that he wasn't alone. Always lock your car doors and carry mace. Oh, that was actually the last one too, so that's perfect, I guess. Why are those like the craziest let's not meet stories I've ever read? I am on let's not meet. I mean, not as much as I used to be, but like I have read a lot of stories on let's not meet, the top stories. I've never seen any of those. 
and I wish I never did. Well, that's all I have for now. I hope you enjoyed. That's such a weird thing to say after reading stuff like that. Like, I hope you enjoyed these people suffering, but it's just like a habit to say it. If you have any weird, creepy stalker stories, let's not meet stories, anything you want to share with me or the community, I will have my subreddit link down below. I hope the echo wasn't as bad in here. I feel like this was actually a smart idea because it's a smaller room. I was like sitting in the living room before, so obviously it was like big and empty, but this I feel like won't be as bad. It also like, uh, the, I filmed two videos in the living room and the echo didn't seem like terrible. And you guys were commenting on the first one that the echo really wasn't that bad. I was talking really quiet in that video. I talked normally in my last one because I forgot and it didn't seem that bad. I've already edited it, so I feel like it's fine. But regardless, I'm gonna go. I hope you guys enjoyed, I already said that. Uh, I don't remember what I was gonna say. I don't remember my outro. I love you guys, I will see you in the next one. Bye. I don't know if I have anything to ramble about because I told you guys about my Stardew Valley addiction in my last video, I had just filmed that and it's still uh, here. I actually do think I'm coming towards the end of the obsession because I played so much. And am I st before that it was Toontown. And I think I've just played too many video games. My back hurts. I'm kind of over the computer right now, but I have nothing else to my name. I don't even have a TV. I dyed my hair. I got it. Uh, well, this was like the color, I think, well, it actually might be a little bit darker than I dyed it before. It looks really dark in here, probably the lighting. It, it is really dark. It's not black. But I did get my hair done uh, on Tuesday. I went in and I was only getting a haircut, which she had to take quite like, uh, she had to take like almost two inches off because it, the ends were so bad. But we didn't cut my hair last time I went in. And I've honestly I've had a rough almost two weeks now, which I still can't talk about. But uh, I wasn't really doing my hair or brushing it. So I, yeah, that was my own fault that I had to cut my hair. But it's still long, so I don't like it's fine and it was like fried enough to here like two years ago so what I'm not gonna complain but I went in just for a haircut because I really needed it and when I got there I was like my ends look really light like it's definitely faded quite a bit and she was like well I have time to dye it so I wasn't expecting to get my hair done like dyed yesterday also I know the bangs were such a bad idea and they're I'm, I'm trying to grow them out they look okay today I feel like but anyways I wasn't expecting to dye my hair and then she was able to dye it so now it's really dark again and I'm like obsessed with it I don't think I'll ever go back to like black necessarily but I'm really glad I went back to brown. I liked the blonde, it was fun while it lasted, but it didn't feel like, I don't know. I, it's weird, cause like with blonde hair, I just feel like, I don't, I don't feel like me. I don't know how to put it. That's like stupid, but whatever. I don't think I have anything to say, so I'm gonna go. I love you guys. Yeah.